Hey, this is Patrick from Frontly. Today, I'm going to show you how to use our block versions feature, which allows you to create more responsive pages and adjust the styles based on certain conditions that you define. So to start, I'm just going to create a very simple page. I'm going to add one row and then I'm going to add three buttons into the row. I'm going to add a few styles to begin with. The first is going to be to turn on the background color of the row and I'm going to add 30 pixels of padding and I'm going to add 30 pixels of item spacing. So now we have this nice 30 pixel gap around all of the buttons and in the row. So easy to see. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on this little uh, preview window here that allows me to preview on tablet and on the phone. So you can see that for the phone view, because there are three buttons here and they're a certain width, they're getting cut off by the, by the screen. So what I want to do is I want to go to the row settings and turn on the allow row wrapping feature. All this does is it tells the row that when I turn it on, it's allowing the items when they run out of space in the row to essentially go down and, and become a new row, like, you know, another layer uh, of the, the blocks that are in this row. So that's a really easy setting that you can turn on and it, it pretty much makes uh, your page responsive by default. But there are some things that we can do, uh, especially if we start to have more advanced layouts that we might want to set up for uh, a, a deeper sort of mobile responsiveness. So maybe what I'll do uh, is I'm actually going to increase the padding here to 50. And let's assume that in desktop mode, I want it to be 50 padding. Um, for tons of space, but maybe in the mobile view, I don't. So if I go back to the desktop view, that's nice. But let's say in the mobile view, maybe I don't want that. So here's how we can use block versions. So you can see up here at the top of any active block while you're editing it. Right now I'm editing the row block itself. So I'm going to click on this plus sign. If I, if I look in this dropdown, there's only the default right now because I haven't created any versions, but I'm going to click the plus sign. And just by doing that, I've created a new version. So we'll click on this little edit symbol here. And now I'm editing the version that I have selected in this dropdown. So I can give the version a name and I'm going to call this mobile view. Now there are a few things you need to do to make the version work. You have to give it a name so you can reference it and then you can create conditions for this version. So these conditions are conditions that must be true in order for this version to show. And if none of the conditions are true for the version, then the default version will show. And you can add multiple different versions, so it can get pretty complex. But for now, I'm just going to start by uh, doing this mobile version. So I'm going to go, and you may have not used this variable, but you can type in these two brackets and then you can type in window width. And so the capital W here for width is important. Um, this is uh, what we call camel case in the uh, development world where the first letter of any subsequent word is capitalized. So this is how all the variables are set up in Frontly. And in this case, it's literally just window width within those brackets. What this does is this grabs the current screen width in pixels in the live app and turns it into a variable. So now I can say, I want to show this version if the window width is less than 800 pixels. That's all I have to do. So now this version, whatever styles I change in this version will apply only when the page window width is less than 800. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go take this padding in my this this spacing around the buttons and I'm going to reduce that to only 10 or maybe 15. So when I go back to my uh, version drop down, keep in mind, this is just for the row block. It doesn't affect the other blocks at this point. If I go back to the default, you can see the settings go back to the default styles. So the change that I made down here in the padding, it only applies to this version. And so things start to get uh, very sophisticated if you want them to. And so I'm going to make a few other changes that I think will be nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the button and I'm going to 
Um, let's see here. I'm going to turn on the fill remaining space option, but I only want to do that for the mobile view. So I'm just going to do the exact same thing I did. I'll call this mobile and I'm going to set the window width. Oops, window width less than 800. So again, I've set up the exact same condition and I'm gonna turn on the fill remaining space. So what this is gonna do is when I have all the buttons like this, I think on mobile, it should hopefully uh, fill the full width. We'll see, we might have to make a few other adjustments as well. I could also set the minimum width to uh, 200 pixels or you know some, some arbitrary number. I think it just has to be enough to force it to be that there can't be room for two buttons on the same row because this is still a row. So technically it's trying to fit all the items side by side by default. And then only when they run out of space is when they go to the new row. So what I'm gonna actually do just so I can save time is I'm gonna delete my other buttons. Oops. <clears throat> all right, so what happened here is when I deleted that other button and I selected it, it just uh, changed the active version. So it looked like something changed, but really nothing to be alarmed by. And so I'm gonna just go double check. Yeah, so I'm duplicating these blocks and the versions are being duplicated with them. So right now I'm looking at the mobile view for all these three blocks. And if I want, I can look at the mobile view for my, uh, my row as well. And while we're at it, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna adjust the item spacing to uh, 15 pixels as well. So there we go, we've, we've actually defined two quite separate views just by using block versions. So I didn't have to uh, show or hide these entire blocks or create any duplicates or anything like that. So it's really nice, it's easy to manage on the page. You don't have to uh, yeah, see a bunch of copies. So without um, doing any more changes, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit save and I'm gonna actually preview the page. So let's see what happens and hopefully it works. So we can see that I'm in the desktop view and it's just like I styled it originally. Now, if I go and I'm gonna use this uh, developer tool that I have where I can just adjust my screen size. So one thing you'll notice about the window width variable is that it doesn't update in real time, which won't actually be a problem for the actual use of the app. So if you're, but if you're going to uh, check it out for yourself to, to try to see if it's working, you're just gonna wanna make sure you refresh the page if you resize the screen. Just something to keep in mind. But you can see just from being in the uh, mobile view, it's less than 800 pixels. So my buttons are looking exactly like I wanted to. This is a very powerful tool and this can be applied to any block on any page. So definitely worth um, investing the time to learn how this works and you can build much more responsive applications with Friendly. Thanks for watching.